not been thrilled with the defense in the second, third quarters, uh, just giving up 41 and 40. You know you're shorthanded, uh, but did you see anything schematically or uh, what, what the difference was on that end? I mean, I, without seeing the tape and obviously got to go back and look at it tonight on the plane, um, just we, we had, you know, we, we, we have to be more competitive and give more effort across the board. Um, we're trying to, two of the biggest things we, we, we focused on coming into the, tonight's matchup was transition defense and um, offensive rebounds. <laughs> we did all right. Fast break points, you know, they held them to single digits, but they had 18 second chance points and they had 12 points off of our turnovers, 15 turnovers. So again, you give them 30 points of things that you can control. Um, you, you, you're probably not going to hold any team in the NBA to zero offensive rebounds or zero points off turnovers. But if you limit those two areas and try to take care of your business and, you know, and be disciplined and, um, be forceful, you know, in terms of putting bodies on bodies and not giving them second and third opportunities. You set yourself up, you know, to have some sort of success and to have a chance at it at least. Um, but Sacramento's a hell of a ball club. You take your hat off to them. Sabonis is, Sabonis is playing at a very elite level. Um, they have a well-balanced team, a well-balanced attack. And uh, Mike is doing a phenomenal job. And, you know, this is another – opportunity for us to go back, take a strong look at what, what transpired and, you know, also being conscious of the fact that we're missing key figures out of our lineup as well. But even still, you know, what could we have done better um, tonight in terms of things that we can control? And so we'll do that and, and, and you know, tee it up and get ready to go play Charlotte. When you're missing guys, how do you try to fight back against if there's any loss of morale or if you see guys? And do you think that seeps in at all? Um, on a no, yes, that's human nature, but it has to be about the spirit of competition, you know, the spirit of being an NBA player, NBA coach, part of an NBA organization, and, and historic one at that, and, and just be excited about the natural elements that you get to be a part of. You know, everyone doesn't get to play, put a uniform on and play in the NBA. Everyone doesn't get to coach in the NBA. Everyone doesn't get to work in the NBA or be one of the, you know, managers of the shop, so to speak, and be a part of a franchise, NBA franchise, let alone one such as the Lakers. So it's an honor to come out here every night and, and, and be a part of the purple and gold and, and to go out and try to make good things happen. And, again, things don't happen overnight. Um, it's our 31st game. We have 51 games left, so we'll chip away and, and, and keep swinging the axe and, and, and keep building and, and trying to lay, continue to lay the foundation that we've come into this with. But it's the spirit of competition that precedes everything, in my opinion. Darvin, um, I know we don't know a specific timeline on AD at this point, but um, this is two straight games where you guys have played playoff caliber teams they've scored over 130 points he, he has been obviously the the center of what you guys do defensively if he is gone for any real period of time do you have to reconfigure anything defensively um in terms of principles uh how much is going to change on that end i don't think i don't think you have to change anything principle wise i just think you you have to do things better um, you have to be more more ready to make adjustments. We have to come up with, you know, put more options. I mean, we already have a lot of options in terms of our defense and things we can do and make adjustments towards. And But we just have to be get to those things quicker. Um, and, and, and individually to a man, just even more competitive pride in, you know, getting a stop and getting a rebound, finishing a defensive possession with a rebound. Um, and it's tough because, you know, you have games set up in a way where it's tough for you to practice. And a lot of things you will want to implement if there's anything new, which, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We happen to do it on the fly without really getting reps, you know. And so that's difficult as well. But, man, make no mistake about it. No one's going to feel sorry for you in this business. You have to just, you know, keep your head down, keep looking at the film. Keep looking at your lineups. Keep looking at which lineups are, you know, with our analytical department, which lineups are bringing, you know, pr providing good fruit, producing good fruit. And uh, 
go with those. And, and you know, the, the NBA season is a marathon, you, and the injuries are a huge part of our sport. So no one's going to feel sorry for you. You just have to keep chipping away and keep working at it and, and try to put your minds together and come up with the best possible solution. Darvin, you bring up lineups. Um, you know, you've been going with starting Pat and Dennis um, to set the defensive tone. But given AD being out, could you foresee a situation where just losing that guy in the middle necessitates finding more size at other positions? Could be. I know we'll see. You know, we have a, a highly intelligent basketball staff and, and, and coaching staff, and we'll put our minds together and see what we come up with um, and see what's the best course of action. But definitely we're not, you know, <laughs> no one likes losing and we don't get comfortable with losing. We try to learn. We look at them as lessons and how can we learn and get stronger going forward. So it's a little bit of everything that will be an option uh, once we weigh everything and, and, and see which, again, which best, which course of action is the best to take. Darvin, does this moment that you and your team find yourselves in feel at all like it was when you were at 2-10? and 10? And can you take anything from the way – you, you made some strides from that moment uh, to apply now. I just know we have a resilient group, and you know when you lose d different guys out of the lineup, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for things to correct themselves, and then you go through another process of change when guys get healthy and they re-enter the lineup. So it's a constant uh, juggling act, man, as as a coach and coaching staff to just plug holes, and then also you know where to put the excess of chips that are there to plug the hole once everybody is, once we're whole again. But, you know, it's, we, we're coaching in the NBA, man. We're playing, we're working in the NBA. There's, there's no greater job on earth. And we always have to balance this with, with reality and keep things in proper perspective. And if me trying to figure out a, a scheme defensively or an NBA player to add to the lineup or change something within the lineup or what we're doing, then, I'm not, you know, trying to solve different viruses or doing anything like that for a living, which is that is very, very much way more admirable for those people that do those jobs. But I'm I'm having the time of my life, even through these little bumps in the road. You know, we're, we're, we're working in the NBA, man. We have the best. These these are the best jobs in, 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 in the world. So I keep it all in perspective and we'll figure it out. That's why we put together a great staff like we've done. And then uh, we'll get with them and try to figure this out. Thanks, Coach. Yep.